Okay, so today we're gonna go over the muscles of the head and neck, and we're gonna be using a variety of models. So make sure when you're studying, you use as many models as you can. Um, so starting off the top of the list, we have orbicularis oculi, which is this muscle here, which circles the eye. And then down here we have orbicularis oris, which circles the mouth. Um, next we have levator labii superioris, and that is this muscle right here, which runs up and runs under, you can kind of see it runs under the orbicularis oculi. Um, you can also see it on uh, this model pretty well on the Miniman. Um, so you see orbicularis oculi, orbicularis oris down here, and then levator labii superioris right there. Okay. Um, next on your list is going to be levator anguli oris, and that you can't see on the half head or this mini man, but you can see it on this model here. Um, so that's going to be this one running at an angle here. You can't see it because uh, this side is superficial, it's deep to uh, a majority of the face, facial muscles. Um, and you can also see it on this mini man here. Um, so specifically, on the deep side of the face right there is levator anguli oris. Um, next we have zygomaticus major and I will use this guy to point that one out. He has a really good one. So zygomaticus major here. Um, and then we have, let's see, depressor labii inferioris and depressor anguli oris. So depressor labii inferioris is gonna be here and then depressor anguli oris is gonna be on the outside here running kind of at an angle. Um, you can also see it really well on this full head. So here's gonna be depressor anguli oris and depressor labii superior, or inferioris, excuse me. Um, next we have buccinator and platysma. So buccinator is going to be um, kind of on the ends, like right where you would uh, assume like the middle of the cheek to be, um, right there, and also right around here on this half head model. And then platysma, you can only see on one of our models, and that's gonna be this one. Um, so platysma is the most superficial part or muscle of um, the facial muscles, uh, and it covers a majority of um, the neck muscles. So this like, uh, large flat covering is platysma. Um, the reason a lot of the our models don't have them is because you can't see the, the muscles underneath, which we're gonna get to in a bit, okay? So one more time, that's platysma. And then you have buccinator, which is not super defined here, but is really defined on this guy right there. Okay, so next we have the glossus muscles, um, which you are not going to have to identify, but you do, you are responsible for knowing. Um, we also have temporalis and masseter. So that's going to be uh, really well seen on this guy here. Um, temporalis and then masseter um, right over here, a muscle of mastication. And then you have your medial and lateral pterygoids. Again, um, you're not going to be able to identify those, but you are responsible for knowing the origin and insertion of those uh, when it comes to it. Then moving down onto muscles acting on the head, so we have sternocleidomastoids, so that's gonna be this really uh, long, thick one here, starting at the mastoid process, ending at the sternum. Um, we have, following that, um, so moving on to this particular model, so as you can see, here's gonna be the more superficial side, you have sternocleidomastoid. If we turn it around on the opposite side, you can see everything that would be underneath sternocleidomastoid. So that includes the three scalenes. So we have anterior scalene, middle scalene, and posterior scalene. You have levator scapula here. So anterior, middle, post, levator scap. Then you have um, splenius capitis running this way. And then right here underneath splenius capitis is gonna be semispinalis capitis, and that runs straight down along your spine. Um, and then covering all of those, so again, so this would be deep, this would be more superficial, you have trapezius right in the back. And that's a very uh, large muscle, and you can see it, um, it goes further down obviously, but for now we're just focusing on the head and neck. Okay, um, and then next we have, um, I believe 
Oh, the highways. So this is pretty much gonna be the last thing on your list. Um, so these are really well seen on this particular model here. Um, so we'll go through it and then we'll try to identify it on, on a, the um, tabletop head model. Um, so starting with um, dig asterisk, so it's gonna be the, um, the, the, higher, the super hyoid um, muscles. We have dig asterisk here running on either side. Underneath, we have mylohyoid, and that kind of runs this way. Um, you can see the fibers running underneath digastric. Um, back over here, we have stylohyoid. So that's gonna be this muscle right here. This one in the back is the posterior belly of digastric. So this and this are one muscle, and this is a separate one. So again, it's digastric, mylohyoid, stylohyoid, and the posterior belly of digastric. Um, you cannot see geniohyoid, so you are not responsible for identifying that one, um, but you are responsible for including it in your suprahyoid list. Um, and then the infrahyoids, we have sternohyoid, so that's going to be this muscle right here running um, really long. Um, we have sternothyroid, so that's going to be this muscle over here. So again, superficial side this side is the deep side so um it's it's as if the um sternohyoid is removed so we have st uh, sternothyroid and then we have thyrohyoid right here um and then the last one on that group is going to be omohyoid and that's right out here on the side of sternohyoid okay and then we're just going to go through the uh the infra supra and infrahyoid muscles on this model as well so right here we have digastric um, do not get it confused with this muscle over here. This muscle is deep to this side, um, so it is not the same thing. Uh, this is digastric and mylohyoid here. And then in the back, we have the posterior belly of digastric running along the very back and uh, stylohyoid, more anterior. Um, and then we have the sternohyoid here, the omohyoid here, um, the sternothyroid is really small. You can kind of see it right there, 94. Um, and then the thyrohyoid right over here.